Welcome back to Brian Knows Movies. This week we are talking about Don't Worry Darling. And man, they should have worried. Don't Worry Darling is Olivia Wilde's second feature length film. The film is about Alice and Jack played by Florence Pugh and Harry Styles. They're a married couple living in this company town in suburban America in the 1950s. They have the quintessential life that you would think everybody would want. Alice is a homemaker. Jack gets to go to the office as a technician on the Victory Project, which is what this town revolves around. They have beautiful cars, beautiful clothes, a beautiful house. The neighbors get together all the time for these social events. Everybody gets along. It seems like it's a picturesque place to stay. But five minutes in the movie, you know something's off. All of these interactions feel fake and plastic, and that's by design. It's almost like these people are engaging with each other without any idea how social interaction works. They're like mimicking what they believe popular and charismatic people would do. And it's all led by the cult leader, played by Chris Pine, and that's Frank. Frank is over the Victory Project. He's everybody's boss and he's always giving these speeches. He has his own radio show on and on and on. You just never get him out your ear. Florence Pugh's character finds out that there's something going on. There's something amiss about the community and she wants to get to the bottom of it. Now I want to be clear that my criticisms of this movie have nothing to do with the drama surrounding Don't Worry Darling. I couldn't care less about all these different things going on behind the scenes. Olivia Wilde was right. You know, there's drama that happens on sets of male directors as well and it's never blown up in the media like this. But even if none of that stuff happened, believe me, this movie would still be getting panned because it just doesn't work. First of all, it's obvious that it's about toxic masculinity. It's about this incel culture of the sexually repressed and angry men who are wishing for a world just like it used to be in the 1950s. You know, at least what they believe that picturesque world would be, where the men are worshipped by their women and their friends with all the men and everything's just gun ho It does not have to beat you over the head with this commentary the way that it does. It feels like a sledgehammer is used to get the point across minute after minute of this film. I get it. These guys are problematic. I get it that they're sexually repressed. I understand that the men want to have sex and, and that's all they really see their partners as is as sex objects. I did not need five or six sex scenes with Florence Pugh to get that point across, especially with how awkward they were. It was very cringy, some of the decisions that were made and kept into the film. I think that some of that stuff could have been cleaned up on the editing room floor and the commentary would have worked a lot better. But okay, so I noticed pretty quickly, probably first 30 minutes of the film, that this is just going to be an average film. It's not going to be one of those Oscar Award nominees like I thought it would. But I'm loving looking at it. It's a pretty film. The costume design is great. I love the vintage cars and how they're lit. I love this town and these houses are great. This is a very pretty film. So at least I'm enjoying looking at what I'm seeing on screen, even if I'm not really into the story. But then they decide to start introducing the sci-fi elements. And from the introduction of those elements, this movie completely falls apart. Science fiction is really hard to pull off because when you're creating science fiction, you have to create a world that has certain rules to abide by that is connected to the science fiction of the project. You can't just introduce elements and conventions of science fiction and then just ignore the rules that come along with it. It seems like this script was written by somebody who broke themselves into a hole and used sci-fi elements to get out of it, thinking that it would excuse some of the logical leaps that we have to make. But it didn't excuse anything. In fact, it made the gap much, much wider. You're constantly thinking throughout the film, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. This whole town would probably not exist if these elements were actually true. It would have been shut down immediately if it ever got off the ground at all. None of this stuff makes sense based off the way that you're setting your story up. And because of that, that commentary, even though it wasn't being handled great to begin with, about, hey, there are some dangerous uh, uh, processes happening in these chat rooms. It's radicalizing men who feel frustrated because of their lot in life, either financially 
financially or economically. Like I said, there's a sexual repression that's within these chat rooms as well. There's these figureheads that are dangerous because they're radicalizing people to think in a way that is dangerous for society. I get that. I'm with that. But I can't pay attention to that when everything in your world doesn't make sense. You still have to make a good movie. You still need to take me from point A to point B to point C in a logical way so that I can be invested in what you're trying to tell me. This film loses all of that. So what's my rating? See it, stream it, or skip it? I'm guessing you probably already know that this is a skip it for me. I was so excited for this film because the promotional materials were great. It was making it seem like this was going to be New Line Cinema's movie to pitch to the Oscars. Florence Pugh looked great. It had a great cast. I thought that this movie was going to be great. In fact, if you go to my website, you'll see that's on my list of most anticipated films of this fall. So it's so frustrating to have a film with potential be so lackluster. Is this the worst film of the year? No, but it's probably top 10. And that is saying something based off of the way that this film was promoted. But anyway, what do I know? I'm just a guy that loves movies. If you want me to do a spoiler review where we can actually talk about the specifics of what went wrong, how this movie went off the rails, then please let me know in the comments. In fact, if I get a hundred likes on this video I promise you that I will create that spoiler review so we can have some discussion in the comment section thank you so much for visiting me again this week thank you thank you thank you and I will see you at the theaters next week <laughs>